What's going on? Generational Gaming Entertainment Network. I am Spartacris. I got a whole bunch of friends here, as you could see. We got Scythe X, we got the Captain, and Zuplex City. What's up, boys? Hello. Thank you for joining me. Fly Life, thank you for no, jumping Fly into Life the chat. In the building. So, if you guys can see in the top right corner or top right corner of your screen, we are here to talk about Spider-Man: No Way Home. This will be a full-blown, spoiler-filled deep dive. Oh. Don't uh, keep watching if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to ruin it for yourself. Or I think if uh, you listen to what we have to say, you're just gonna go out and see it even more, even more times. That's how good it is. Lone Wolf, what's going on, buddy? He gave Spider-Man a ten out of ten. That mm -hmm. actually leads me right into the first uh, question I was going to ask you guys. What uh, would you rate this movie? Let's start with uh, Zuplex. What do you think? If you had to give um, it out of 10, what would you rate it? Out of 10, I'm going with uh, 9.7. I can't 9. give anything 7. a 10. Because I feel like if you give something a 10, then there's no room. If something comes out that's better than this, then we got no room to go up. You know what I mean? 9.7 out of 10. What about the captain? What do you think? Um, I'm going to give it, I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. 9.5. All right. A little more room for improvement. And what about you, Scythe? I'd probably go a nine. So if I'm being honest, I would have given it a 10 out of 10 when I left the theater on Thursday. And then I saw it again on Monday and I gave myself a few days to think about it. And I probably dropped a solid point. And I have my reasons, but I would give it a 9 out of 10. Just straight 9 out of 10, just like Scythe. Uh, oh, uh, one shot. He just made me feel all guilty, and now he's telling me he can't jump into the chat anyway because he's on daddy duty. You know, you know what you, <laughs> you got to bust my chops for. So before we get into the spoiler-filled stuff, I thought it would be good, give people a couple more minutes to decide if they want to hear what we have to say. Uh, out of I want to really quickly, out of all the Spider-Man movies, the Spider-Men movies, where do you rank No Way Home amongst all the movies? So that's all the live action and Into the Spider-Verse. Best. Easy. So you think it's an easy best? No, it's actually not even close. I know. I Listen, I know Spider-Verse. I, I hear it, right? I do. Spider-Verse is a whole different, whole different animal, though, right? You're talking an animation. You're talking, you're talking a first. But this movie, I said it before, this one, you knew what you were getting you knew what you were walking into and still had no freaking idea what you were walking into that's one hand the solid way to put it um i would probably say it's like 1a 1b with spider-verse 1a 1b I'd put it on par because spider-verse was just a completely different animal the animation was the best I've seen for any live action or not live action for any like Spider-Man uh, cartoon. It, it was just a, a different beast. And uh, this No Way Home was just it blew my mind from start to finish. So. I, I mean, I kind of agree real quick. Uh, Fly Life just let us know that he's on daddy duty also. So him in one shot can uh, go ahead and uh, share that responsibility. Go. And Lone Wolf just said he thinks it's the best because of all the other movies existing. Without all the other ones, this wouldn't even exist. I kind of I agree think, with Fred. Uh, Arguably, yeah, I think it's uh, on par with Into the Spider Verse, um, but it's a very close, like a very close number yeah. one. What do you What yeah, are you going to say, Zuplex? I'm kind of agreeing with you guys. Um, I think it's Spider Verse is the competition, right? Right. right. Like, nothing else that we've seen so far come close to this movie or spider-verse so spider-verse is really the competition for it so it's a matter of i think i put this one ahead of it just because it's live action exactly yeah I, because i think i think because of the edge spider -Verse, as great as it is it's still an animated movie so you can get away with a little bit more it's a it's stakes aren't mm -hmm. as high you can get you know acting right. doesn't have to be that great you know because it's mostly just dialogue in a booth and stuff like that this, I think because of that reason, this isn't taking anything away from Spider-Verse because Spider-Verse is still yeah. insane. Like animation wise, it's amazing. The soundtrack is killer. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a great movie, but this because it's live action, it gave you a live action Spider-Verse. Right. You know what I right. mean? So yeah, I, I tend to think that you can't compare Spider-Verse exactly for the reason you stated. If you wanted to compare 
what if to the spider verse when it comes to you know marvel movies shows and where they compare on an animated level then i can do it but nobody ever i mean i haven't maybe you guys have <clears throat> when i'm talking about the mcu and the movies no one is telling me uh you know avengers endgame uh thor ragnarok spider verse right. right like they're not they're not putting that in there even though we talk about it being great because it's animated so therefore it can't even be on my list really i just that's how i feel <clears throat> i mean i i don't disagree those are all very good points um but in the end i was just asking for the ranking because i wanted to give people a little bit more time to decide if they wanted to hear all the spoilers uh, I'm tired of avoiding the spoilers now, so we're going to jump yep. right into it. All right, so first thing, I want st- to try to keep it organized. We're going to be jumping around a lot. There is a lot to dissect with this movie, so let's get some thoughts on just the overall story. So for anyone who has seen the movie, the the story ends up being Peter Parker gets found out. If you watched Far From Home, you know at the end, Mysterio basically tells the world who he was, that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Because of that, him... MJ and Ned can't get into the colleges they want. Happy is being investigated, and his life is just all over the place. So he goes to Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange does a spell, make the world forget about Peter Parker being Spider-Man. Peter Parker, being a kid, fucks it all up, and then invites some villains from various universes. Um, I think this take, this version of the One More, one more Day storyline from the comics, was a masterfully written... Uh, live action version in the MCU. They they adapted that storyline perfectly. I don't have a lot of complaints with the way it was done, but I will say, Doctor Strange being so quick to do the spell and allowing Peter to stand there and like mess with it like he did after seeing it the second time, that kind of irritates me a lot more than it did the first time I saw it. I feel like the Doctor yeah, Strange think, we've uh, seen up until now wouldn't do that. Yeah, but he you have to remember, he did say. I have to keep reminding myself you're just a kid, right? So, so with that mm-hmm. being said, if it's Iron Man, I don't think he's letting Robert. I don't think he's letting Tony Stark do that. But the fact that he's looking at a kid right, in high right. school, just trying to help his friends go to college, I think that <clears throat> you got so aggravated, and it hit the nail on the head. You got aggravated by a kid bothering you. That's what kids do. Yeah. <clears throat> Another thing, also. He even said it in the movie. He doesn't have the time stone anymore. So he doesn't know all the possibilities of his actions ahead of time. Yeah. So I, I think he's just going in as blind as Peter was just blurting out the idea. Yeah. I think one of the things about it is like with the one more day storyline, you know, um, I, I kind of thought that that's where they were going to be going with it. And it wasn't going to be the Doctor Strange. I thought it was going to be the Necromancer or Mephisto or one of those, or the, you know, the Doctor Strange variant, Necromancer, whatever. They're tiptoeing around Mephisto. Yeah, they're tiptoeing around Mephisto a lot. They're doing that for Uh, a reason, though. I don't know they're ever going to bring Mephisto in. I think they're just teasing us at this point because the game's a big thing. I mean, eventually they're going to have to get to him (laughs) because they kill off all their villains, so they can't really go back to the well with a lot of them. Yeah, that's not a bad point. Just a, think, as a uh, quick reminder, uh, Icons hasn't seen the movie yet either. Uh, so, Steve, if you if you don't want to ruin it for yourself, then you might have to go watch it and then ch- check out the YouTube. Sorry, Suplex, go ahead. Uh, so one of, the, um, one of the things about the storyline is that I was actually kind of happy they didn't go with the, the, one, the true One More Day storyline of, of Mephisto and everything like that. And it was Doctor Strange just being... I, I, I disagree with you. I think Doctor Strange would do that because, like he says in the movie, is like he says, like we've used this spell for less well, long. Like, do you remember the Christmas party? You know what I mean? Like yeah. he is that cocky Doctor Strange, and I, think I just that's, didn't that's feel that with. the explanation in the movie was good enough. But then again, you know, we got Doctor Strange too, right around the corner. I mean, that's not we're yeah. not going to wait too long, and they could really kind of flesh out why he did what he did, even in that movie. Uh, that's clearly going to be a continuation. Uh, Mr. Oh, Buttersworth exactly. just uh, let us know that Richard Pryor is going to be playing Miles Morales in the next Spider-Man movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I would watch it. I'd watch it. Um, so some of the other things, I, I mean, I'm a little, I was also disappointed on the second time watching it that we didn't get a true Sinister Six. We got five. 
So that, yeah. that you know, we actually we actually kind of did me. get six. We actually did get six. Oh, no, we did get. Ugh. Venom doesn't count. The Venom doesn't he count. counts. No, he counts. He was there. I mean, he, he, he doesn't count, lost bro. He wasn't fighting nobody. He was in a bar drinking. Yeah. yeah. He, no, Venom doesn't count, and and we'll get to him later on when we start talking about the end credit scenes. But that whole scene did not need to be in the movie. I, that's one of the few times that MCU put an end credit scene in a movie that I kind of was like, "Why the f is that here?" That that it just kind of ruins it, it ruins stuff. The whole future, yeah. That did it? One scene yeah, blew up the whole future. It just we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes a lot more questions. We'll get to it. Yeah, I want I want to get into more of the story. Uh, I just want to talk about some of the things I love about the story. One of the things I absolutely love about the story is the fact that Green Goblin fucking beat the ever loving shit out of Peter Parker. I mean, yeah. that hallway fight, the fight in the in the building was one, probably one of my favorite top 3 fight scenes in the MCU. Just strictly for the fact that he throws him into the ceiling and then catches him and just fucking pile drives him through four floors to the lobby. I mean, he said forget the elevator. We're we're going the fast way down. It was that fight scene was just fantastic. Great. By yeah. the way, um, William <laughs> Defoe. I mean, he's the goat. Completely ten out of steals a shot. Ten out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Absolutely. He was, he was a thousand movie. times better now than he was back yes. in whatever that was. Two thousand two or it was, it was almost like it took him a decade to actually figure out how he wanted to make the Green Goblin. Right. Right. You know, it's almost like he did the Green Goblin and was like, you know, I went back, I watched this. It was pretty good. And then I had all of this time to really mull over how ridiculously sick I wanted to make this character. Right. And then came and did it. Right. I, I would tell you right now. What's up, Zuplex? I said one of the things that really impressed me with this movie is they, they really listened to the problems – that the fans had with all the previous Spider-Mans that they've done, mm-hmm. right? And kind of fixed them all in one movie. Like one of yeah. the things about the show that that I love that that they did for him was he didn't wear that stupid mask the entire movie. Well, like listen, he, he, he you... broke it right in the beginning because in the first move in the first Spider-Man with Toby, there's that scene where they're sitting there talking to each other and they're both wearing masks where their heads don't move. And it looks like two action figures standing there on robot chicken. So you yep. hit the nail on the head. But before I, I got a specific point I want to make, this is one of the reasons why this movie is so good. But before I do that, Icon, you said you have a question. Spit, throw it out. How are they working on Venom knowing who Peter Parker is? I, that's a question we'll get to later, uh, Icons, because yeah. uh, the whole Venom thing really kind of throws a wrench in a lot of these, uh, a lot of these plot points. And then Pat Wall says, uh, I heard he said uh, Willem Dafoe would only come back if he had more than just a glorified cameo, which you could see in the movie, uh, Pat. He yeah, friggin' he, he wanted to do his own He stuff. steals the whole movie. And to your point, Suplex, this, the, one of the reasons why I am a big fan of Kevin Feige and the MCU overall and generally where they can announce anything and I'll just – I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to go see it. No problem. I just want to – I have faith in them is yeah. that they took that stupid-ass Green Goblin outfit the Power Ranger elf outfit from the first movie. They didn't change too much. They added a purple hood and some tattered clothing, and suddenly yep. you had an intimidating green goblin that yep. looked like he could beat the ever-living shit out of Spider-Man. That's, yep. you know, that's, they know what they're doing. They actually, speaking, just kind of jumping to the villains a little bit here, they took Electro, Green Goblin, Doc Ock didn't really change too much, um, but Sandman and Lizard, and essentially turned these characters that kind of looked, you know, silly in their original movies, and made them intimidating characters. In one movie, they they were able to do that. That's how good Kevin yeah. Feige and the brain trust that Marvel is. It's just ridiculous. I liked how it gave not only the Spider-Man, but it gave all the villains of the other universes closure to their own story. Oh, one hundred percent. And I would argue that just, for Tom, for Andrew Garfield's character, after watching No Way Home, still, oh, you can go just, back and watch the first two, and you're gonna like those movies even more now. Oh, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I always said that Andrew Garfield was the best Spider-Man. Um, he was just not a very good Peter Parker, in my opinion. He was like he was too cool. He was too yeah. 
I, I don't disagree with that. Nerdy enough. I don't um, disagree with that at all. When he was in the Spidey suit, he was top notch. Top notch. There's actually a petition now to give him a Amazing Spider-Man three movie, bring him back. Yeah, and for his own series. I love I love your Spider-Man. Facebook post. Can we talk about that Facebook post about um the Logan style Spider-Man? Oh, that would be baller. I want I want it to be with Andrew Garfield, with them showing him not pulling his punches like he explained in the movie. Just him, just all dark and angry, and just beating the piss out of people. I would there's actually a, love a theory that. Theory going out now that um, they were talking about why the other Green Goblin wasn't in there, um, and they're saying that it's possible that Andrew Garfield killed him in his universe. That would be an amazing yeah, ending to Han, a, a, a amazing to Han, Green Goblin. They're saying after he killed Gwen Stacy, when he when when Andrew Garfield starts talking about it, how he uh, he stopped pulling his punches, and that's what he was talking about with the Green Goblin and killed him. That's why he didn't show up. I would love to see that. Yeah, I would love to see awesome. that maybe in a Disney Plus show, even yeah. or you know, I would just love to see that to see that play out would be sick. Uh, wrote, awesome. <laughs> side note: uh, Mr. Buttersworth just let us know that Melissa McCarthy is going to be playing the next Spider Ham character. <laughs> Um, uh, the crazy performance when when Andrew <clears throat> when Andrew caught MJ and he at her the show. and and <clears throat> and he looked at her and you were like, "Wow, you cried." You know, I know you yeah. cried. I cried. I, 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 I ain't ashamed I, to admit it. I bro, cried. Some, I somebody cried. was cutting onions all over that theater. Bro. <laughs> I, I can tell you right now. The way I didn't cry was because I had guys around me, so I purposely said like asshole comments to them to make my <laughs> cry. But if I was there with if I was there with the wife, if I was there by myself, I'd have been full. I would actually been sobbing, hysterical. Dude, that was it's a I sad scene. Myself, and there was there was two times when I was misty eyed. Yeah, yeah. Well, Andrew Garfield was one of them. And what's the other one? You can go ahead and say it because we're getting right. there. Uh. Probably looking at the emotion come out of Tom Holland during that Aunt May scene. Yeah, he's a uh, Tom Holland is a fucking fantastic actor, man, he, for sure. He kills that whole scene, man. So now, that, go ahead, John. I was gonna say that didn't get it was it was where he was saying goodbye to Ned and MJ, and yeah, that he, got and, me. He said, and he said like he said I, I'll come find you, you know, and she's like you you know you promise, and yeah. and he and you're like. I couldn't even. And I was actually like thinking about it. Like, you imagine saying goodbye to some of the most important people in your life, and like, they're never gonna remember you again, dude. Like, right. that was why. Yeah. That was another scene. I was like, come on, man. And you kind of knew, even at that moment, you knew that he was gonna make the heroic choice and kind of be like, let me just stay out of their lives. You knew it at that moment, you know. At, Speaking well, of that, that, was the thing. Finally, gave Tom his. In the ultimate Spider-Man move of all, is sacrificing yes. everything for the good of everybody else. Finally. You know, and that's one of the things everybody complained about. His previous Spider-Man movies was that he's being helped by Tony. He was being helped by Nick Fury. Like yeah. Happy helped him. He wasn't really standing on his own. He really didn't sacrifice anything. And now you got it. You got the ultimate sacrifice where he sacrificed everybody he knows and loves. Yeah. Uh, to, to save the world. Now that's another, to me, that's another major, major plus for this movie and a major reason why you got to give Feige his credit because everyone complained that this was the, the technology given to, to Peter was a little too high end. Like, you know, he's not the, we're not too seeing the geeky Peter who can kind of do it on his own and have to struggle. And clearly they had this plan set where it was like, by the, this basically, these three movies, Homecoming, Far From Home, and No Way Home, were essentially one big origin story for the classic right. Spider-Man that we I was grew just up about with. To say that. I was just about to say that. They didn't give us a Spider-Man origin because we've already seen it twice. Yeah. But at the same time, they gave us a Spider-Man origin in the span of three movies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, we got and, it anyway. And, Absolutely and, genius. We did it. And they, they, yeah. definitely, they definitely showed in the... Um, I always forget the, the the glass dimension or the mirror dimension. The mirror, yep. the mirror. They showed 
that Spider-Man was truly how intelligent he was mm -hmm. when Strange is doing this, he's doing that, whatever. He's falling through, he's getting the box, and all of a sudden, he stops. He's like, wait a second. Oh, this simple is, geometry. This is yeah. simple geometry. I could do this. Yeah. And it, and then he outsmarted a guy who created the dimension. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, like, you saw finally you were like, you're like, all right, here he is, yeah. you know? And to your this, point, Suplex, uh, th this is, you know, you mentioned the cocky Doctor Strange earlier. That's uh, It's nice to see someone that cocky get taken down a notch by a, a kid yeah. trying to get into college. I mean, he, yeah, he, exactly. he beat him handily, which was nice. So now what did you think, speaking of some of the uh, kind of twists and turns in the movie, what did you think about Ned having the magic powers? Ned having what? Magic powers. I thought it was interesting. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was interesting to me. I mean, we all, so we all know in the comic book, Ned becomes the Hobgoblin. So I don't. Know, I wonder if the magic powers is supposed to lead into some sort of turn what, to the villain side. That's what I think they're doing. Is Ned's gonna lead? It's gonna lead Ned to Hobgoblin. Yeah, and and he also and he also sets it up when he says, when like for no reason at all, he says, "Don't worry, I'm not gonna become one of your best friends that come and try to and kill you." You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, every, yeah, exactly. Everyone looks at him and is like, "What?" Yeah. He's like. <laughs> I do like uh, Andrew Garfield gives him a little pat on the back like there you go bud but now yeah. so to, to your point though too so they set it up with that comment and then when they're in Ned's house right before Toby and Andrew join the movie they zoom in on a plaque of knives that's like hanging on the wall and then they All also right. linger a shot on uh, his mom sewing some outfit that has the gold and green or it's like an orange goldish green color scheme which is what his color scheme is in the comic books so they're clearly setting him up I guess he'll be you know he'll be the ant the, the big uh, villain for the next at least the next movie or next uh, few movies for Tom Holland and and the whole reasoning is i think is because he doesn't know that he's friends with Spider-Man right he yep. has no idea right he's completely brainwashed now and someone did say um, i read a theory that Ned and MJ will be dating in the next movie and then somehow MJ will remember Peter and remember like the relationship they had and essentially Peter will steal MJ from Ned, and that will set him. That will start him against. I hate, uh, P, you know, Peter Peter Parker basically. But let me let me tell you one. Let me give you a theory that I think they should do, and this is the only way they'll redeem the Venom uh, cameo in the end credit scene. What if the symbiote goes gets to Peter in the next movie or two? Peter rejects it, and the symbiote bonds with Ned, and Ned hates Peter because Peter took MJ, and like kind of stole almost like the life that he was supposed to have. And Ned becomes the new Venom for the MCU. No, I don't know. I thought, I I mean, know. I thought that was a mic drop uh, theory. You guys reacted like that. <laughs> First of all, I, I want to see Hobgoblin. I don't know. I can't see him as Venom. No I, matter I, the I see him as Venom. No matter the wrench you guys think it 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 puts into the operation, the fact is is in the second Venom, the cutscene is exactly the one that you got again and they connected both cutscenes, which is why I didn't have a problem with it. In Venom 2, the cutscene, he's talking and all of a sudden the earth shakes and he ends up in Mexico, right? right. And he's looking at the TV and he <clears throat> and he sees Spider Man and Venom is like, We have to go meet this Spider Man, right? Like like he and he essentially they just connect both cutscenes and he's a Spider Man character. So I don't mind it. I'm like, you know what? It's it's Kevin Feige doing what he does, connecting all the dots. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, what I don't know. Mean, we're we're so. going to dive into that later. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Up for it, bro. I'm going to be the optimistic one. He'll probably find Tom Hardy in the new, the new movie. It'll be Tom Hardy again, and Tom it Hardy will be. Hardy. Honestly, Tom Hardy. John Cena should play the MCU Eddie Brock as a big meathead, <laughs> like like Dum Dum. And then Venom, because because in the comic books, and you know Eddie Brock was this big bodybuilder, big muscle muscular guy. John Cena looks exactly like him. He looks exactly like Eddie uh, Eddie uh, Brock in the comics. I don't make very similar, yeah, very similar. Real quick before we uh, keep going, uh, we have a first time chatter. Uh, my buddy of mine named Val. What's up, Val? Thank you for jumping into the chat. Um, so one of the things that I liked the first time I watched the movie, and then when I saw it on Monday, I was kind of like, uh, I don't know if I was a fan was Aunt May delivering the with great power comes great responsibility line. Only, I loved it. Hate it. Only because they I avoided that origin already. So I didn't feel like we needed to rehash it. 
and especially because since Tobey Maguire was in the movie, I feel like it would have been I would have been and liked it more if he delivered the line for the first time to Peter when Peter was going through his like dark period of like I want to kill Green Goblin. Dude, you guys will nitpick anything. I am. I'm a nitpicker, man. I'm a nitpicker. Oh, there was. I'm a nitpicker, man. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? It was. It was the moment. It's like 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 they said in the movie. It's every Spider-Man's time that their relative dies delivering that line. Like yeah. that. That yeah. was the drop. That's the moment that- when he became Spider-Man. Like that was it. He was no longer Iron Boy Junior. Like that, Iron Boy Jr. <laughs> Remember, the, end of the day they have to have that scene, right? Because it's yeah. the only thing that brings him to the point of where it's the only thing that brings him to the point where he's able to make the sacrifice. Right. Yep. Right. Uh, I mean, have that scene. Henry doesn't die. She doesn't say that to him. He doesn't make that sacrifice. Then I guess for me uh, though, it's like in in I think it was a uh, Civil War actually. When you first see Robert Downey Jr. talking to Peter Parker, he basically gives that speech. I, th- I forget how he says it, but something like, you know, if, if you could do the things I do, but you don't do them, that's when the bad things happen. Like, that's good enough. I, I, nah, I, just, I didn't need it again. We heard it so many times, you know. I, nah. I, that's one thing I didn't like about it. <clears throat> he meets two random spider man Two random guys, right? They come down and talk to him. He's like, what the F, right? And you're still figuring out how to connect how is he supposed to connect with guys that essentially look like him with from a different multiverse that he has no idea if they actually have anything in common with him? And that line was one of them. And the other one was when they were all doing their own experiments. Yeah. And, and what's his name? Andrew goes, Gwen. Well, that's my MJ. Right. 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 And once again, connecting now, mind you, Tom, Tom didn't have... Uh, his, his uncle, right? So they both looked at each other and connected the dots like, wow, right? This is... Yeah. So it, it's that for me, anything that continues to connect and have that continuity through it versus leaving a lot of loopholes, I feel like it closed more loopholes. Of course, for you, it opened more. Because yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm an asshole. <clears throat> Icons, actually. Thank you, uh, uh, Steve. He agrees with me. He thinks Toby should have said it. And he actually makes it even better. Toby should have started the saying, and Andrew Andrew Garfield should have finished it. And I agree with that. It would have been, it would have been better than Aunt May spitting it out right before she died. Then you got to kill Toby. <clears throat> they already had Toby. that. <laughs> right. the, line, the, the, line, the line isn't as, poor, as important as, this, as the death. You know? Correct. No. Correct. It, you, the line means nothing. It's a, it's a line that every parent tells their kid or something along those lines. But because it's their dying words, it's the thing that he'll always remember. Yeah, right? I don't. So dis- Toby, I don't disagree with that. To, then Toby's got to be die real early, as he's saying it, and and he passes the Uncle Ben knowledge on to Tom, you know, well, and then he can say it. I wouldn't have hated that actually if uh, if Toby said it, in, you know, after getting stabbed <laughs> by the course. goblin. But let me ask you this: too late then at that point. They yeah. already had one of those lines in the movie, and I'm trying to go back now in my mind, but they had a line where somebody started it. And then somebody else finished it. And I'm trying to remember. Um, remember. Somebody said something. I think it was and... Tony Stark. No, no, no. I want to say that. Wh- I want to say William Defoe started it in the thing. I, I got to, it'll go over it. I got to, you know, get yeah, it. Yeah. COVID, you know what I'm saying? COVID but, brain. I, COVID brain, people. You're talking about yeah, COVID this brain movie, going here. Somebody said it? Yeah. And there was, there was already one of those lines where they started and oh. then like, looked at him and the person and another person finished whatever the saying was you can't have too many of these cliche lines in a movie how you know how much you're going to do you want to make it nostalgic you want to connect you don't want to overdo it so you just hit the points that you know will leave all of us as fans like high school girls yeah. right and be like all right like yeah. You're, you know, we're sitting at the edge of our seat and we're like, let's go, you know? So I got to ask you though, when Ned did the portal and Andrew walked in, did the, did the theater go nuts over there when you guys saw it? Absolutely nuts. Actually. So when I I went to see it by myself on on Thursday night and when Ned opens the first portal and you see Spider-Man like down the alleyway, I I could tell immediately that that was uh, Andrew Garfield. So I, I said out loud, I was like, yo, it's Andrew, like just kind of instinctively. 
when he Ka-ka. jumped when he jumped through the portal though someone in the row, same row as me but down like in the middle of the theater just yelled out let's fucking go and then the entire theater just started <laughs> just clapping and like standing yeah. ovations and then when you know when, the moment he did it again and toby came out you you know everyone was already clapping it was already hyped up i mean was, again we knew that was going to happen and it was for, so it was exciting a lot louder for toby than it was for andrew I can imagine. Sure. Real, real quick, uh, Mr. Buttlesworth just says uh, Joe Manganiello should play Eddie Brock, which is not a bad choice either. Uh, Joe Manganiello should have been playing Craven the Hunter. I agree, but Aaron Taylor Johnson is not a bad choice, I think, for Craven the Hunter. It's not a bad choice, no. but I'd rather see Joey Manganiello do it. But... I'll tell you what. Let me ask you this question. Did the theater get louder for Andrew and Toby or Charlie Cox? Andrew. Actually, my theater got louder for Charlie Cox. So the Charlie Cox oh. thing, and obviously, like this movie was filled with a bunch of secrets that weren't secrets, yeah. like the worst kept secrets the, ever. It's kind of the opposite movie. of secrets. Yeah, the opposite <laughs> of secrets, like everything leaked months ago. We've we've been talking about me and you have been talking about Charlie Cox coming for I don't even know how long at this point. Yeah. Um, but one of the things is this is the genius thing that they did with the short short scene that he was in. It's such a small thing, but it means so much. Is that they established that Matt Murdock is in this universe. Right. They established that he's a lawyer. But then they established that he's actually Daredevil when the brick comes through the window. Right. Dick. And he catches it. It's a two second right? scene. Right about, and they did what's all those things. What's great about that scene is you see Peter also reaching for the brick right. yes. from the Spidey yes. sense. And just Matt just grabs it right out of the air. And, and you and know, first. Zuplex, to your point, though. Like the visual language there is it's just stellar because the fact that Daredevil could catch the brick, even though he doesn't have Spidey sense, and Spider Man was was will, ready and willing to go, it just shows you how powerful or how quick Daredevil is in Absolutely. whether it's the same Daredevil or not. You know what I mean? It's, it shows you how good he is. Matt Murdock, they could have given us Matt Murdock, and we wouldn't have known he's, if he's actually Daredevil or not without that scene. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But they that's could have just kept it straight lawyer right. talk, and that was it. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's Marvel going like, "Don't worry, guys, we got you." We and got best you for sure. answer, best answer he gave, he gave Tom Holland was yeah. he was like, "How'd you do that?" He goes, "I'm a really good lawyer. <laughs> I'm a really good lawyer." <laughs> with, the, with, with the Charlie Cox smirk, like I love, like I die when he I died when he said. And that. how like, now? How amped are you guys? It, you know, anyone who's watched Kingpin or not Kingpin, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Hawkeye. Okay. I'm, I'm going to spoil the show for you now too, Kingpin. Vincent D'Onofrio was in that show. So we got now, we got our boy Charlie Cox as Daredevil, and we got Vincent D'Onofrio in the MCU as Kingpin. I mean, have that you guys gets watched me the season finale yet? I have not I watched did. season finale yet. No. I did. Okay. All right. All right. Then I have it. <laughs> no, you could, you could say it. You could say it because I'm not, I'll watch it no matter what. So they, Honestly, I was very disappointed with how they ended the series. Really? Especially with Kingpin stuff. He's in it. He, uh, he has a couple of good fight scenes with Kate. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to spoil it for everybody, but um, interesting. You're the first person I heard said they didn't like the ending. So the, I didn't <laughs> like was, the ending. It was because... an interesting ending, and it leaves it on a weird note. Yeah, really? it definitely leaves it on a weird note. I would have rather them been more succinct and be like, "Kingpin is here to stay," and leaving mm-hmm. it open ended like they did. So that's but, uh, we might have to do another discussion for Hawkeye that then because that episode was insane. And for some reason, they said we were supposed to understand uh, if the if Duncan <laughs> and Matt Murdock were canon, the Netflix characters were canon. It, I didn't really get a sense that it wasn't a different universe, or it just seemed like they were the same people. Really, like I didn't really know what they were talking about. Well. I mean, there's a lot of debate going on whether or not they're canon into this universe. Um, I do know that because I I was deep dive on the uh, on the Netflix shows. They're some of my favorite content that Marvel's actually ever put out, um, yeah. especially Daredevil and Punisher. Um, even the first season of Jessica Jones. But they That's mention absolutely. fantastic. There's a there's a lot of mentions of stuff like they mention the Battle of New York. They mention right. The Hulk, they mentioned Captain America, but not right. by name. They mention him by like the, the super soldier or right, the right. guy or whatever it is. So I'm a bit, I'm a believer in that they're all in the same universe, but they're just I such street level heroes that it never really made the mainstream. If you Mi- will. Mr. Buttersworth says uh, John Bernthal should appear in the Moon Knight series. 
which I don't disagree with because that series is kind of ripe for some violent I vigilante action. In, I think he appears in Armor Wars. I think he does too. Well, I think he appears in a Disney Plus show. I, you know, it remains yeah. to be seen yeah. which one he's coming in. I, I want to say, though, I feel like it's going to be the same continuity from the Netflix shows. Um, but I almost guarantee you that the MCU is going to kind of scale their powers up a little bit so that they can actually hold their own with people like Spider-Man. Because even without Iron, uh, Tony Stark's technology, Peter Parker can still beat the ever-loving shit out of any street-level thug. You know what I mean? If he's going to yeah. be your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, you know, he, he could take Kingpin out like it's nobody's business. So they have to kind of scale them up a little bit so they can kind of go toe-to-toe and be a real threat. Uh, I'll That's tell you, though, that King, that seeing <laughs> Kingpin in that last episode... It was good to see. Well, Vincent D'Onofrio cool. is, in my opinion, the best kingpin. Like, like hands down, uh, the best kingpin. And really, I can't see them hi- getting somebody else to be the character as well as he did. No, he's definitely, definitely the, the top of it. And he, um, he did. I mean, listen, he was great in Hawkeye. Don't get me wrong. It's not a not awesome. against him. It's, it's more storylines where they're heading with it. I think the next time we see Matt Murdock's Daredevil is going to be in the Echo series. Or possibly She-Hulk. Okay. She might be a uh, a fellow lawyer of his. Right, right. You know, and I actually thought she was going to be the one that. in No Way Home. I didn't think uh, we were going to get Charlie Cox. Nah, it had to be Charlie Cox because, I mean, in the comics, Spider-Man and Daredevil have such a, uh, you know, a bond. You know, yeah, what I mean, they, yeah. they they fight crime alongside each other all the time. Like they're always, you know, there's there's those times where Spider-Man took over the Daredevil mantle to prove that, that Matt wasn't Daredevil and stuff like that. So I think it had to be Matt, you know? I think uh, one of the other things I really love about this movie, the whole storyline of Tom Holland, or not Tom Holland, Peter Parker not wanting to send the villains back because he thought they were going to die and trying to cure them was just, a, I think, a genius way of getting all these bad guys together for some some silly antics, hanging out in the apartment together and just kind of like bullshitting. Mm-hmm. Was again, yeah. it's just like a, a genius writing move to kind of give us some scenes that I never thought we'd get, honestly. I kind of had a weird thought about, like, in, a weird issue with that. It was kind of strange to send them back cured to me. I don't know. To send them back where? To send them back to their own uh, universe? Send them yeah. back to their universe, like, cured. Like, do I, they? I thought it was a weird route to go. Like, do they get, are they cured when they go back and now all of a sudden, like, whatever transpired between that Spider-Man and that yeah, yeah. Spider-Man? Dude, now- they're, they're on completely different timelines now. They're branching all over because they right. should all be dead. Right. And yeah. now, you know, so now you bring up a good point, John. This is, I actually said this to Fred when he uh, first finished the movie. So just kind of jumping over to a plot hole that I think is a plot hole is at the end of the movie, in order to save the day, Peter, Peter Parker tells Doctor Strange, if you cast a brand new spell and make the world forget that Peter Parker ever existed, then it'll like save the day, whatever. So Strange is like, yeah, but you got to remember, they're all going to forget you or whatever. Does that, he, you know, he doesn't say make the world forget me, just he's make the world forget Peter Parker. Does that apply right. to the other Peter Parkers? The, 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 the universes were colliding at that point, so... You know, does Tobey Maguire, does Mary Jane not know who Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker I, is? I would assume no, because, I mean, listen, unless proven different, those guys are going to go back to their universes. They wouldn't have even been able to change the trajectory of what happened to them in their universe if it wasn't if, if it wasn't going to stay the same. <clears throat> right. You know what right. I mean? Now they're going to go back. The only thing I didn't like is they're going to go back in a fight scene. They all talked about it. Um... You know, Shock said, he's being, last thing I remember is I'm being shocked that I felt this incredible power and then I was here. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and Doc Ock said, you know, I had, I had the power of the sun in my hands and then I was here. He said he was, right? yeah, he said he was choking <laughs> Spider-Man. He had him in his hand. Yeah. So all of them were essentially about to kill Spider-Man or be killed by Spider-Man or whatever it may be. And now they're good guys. So now he goes back. So Shock goes back to his universe. He has no more electricity inside of him. But the scene that he left off on, he's being fried to death. Right. Okay. <laughs> I so, thought the same thing. Well, that's the thing is is that's the that, that's what bothered me the most about the whole send them all back cured thing is that right. they all still die. Yeah. Right. Because if you remember, 
Doc Ock at the end of Spider-Man 2 was good again when he harnessed the, the power of the machine right. and wound up, he sacrificed himself to save the city, right? So he's still going to do that. Like, Green Goblin is still going to get impaled by the, the glider. Uh, uh, Electro is still going to get fried by the electricity because <laughs> yeah. now he's got no buffers in him. You know, the only one that makes it out is Sandman. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, even, but you then know, again, like, Lizard even, didn't die um, in uh, Amazing Spider-Man well, 1. Lizard didn't die. He just got, he got cured at the end so, of that movie so, anyway. So nothing changes with, with his story. I actually, John, yeah. uh, to your point, I have I had this funny, like, kind of, like, vision when all the the villains go back of, like, I, I imagine, I picture in my head Green Goblin, you know, Tobey Maguire beat the hell out of him. He's, like, talking to him. He's appealing to the Peter Parker in him while he's setting up the glider to come stab him from behind. And then he gets zapped to this universe. He comes back, and the glider's already on the way to kill Spider-Man. And he's going, no, 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 wait. I'm actually a good guy now. And Spider-Man jumps out of the way, and he gets stabbed anyway. Like, I feel like that's just, it's just yeah. to your point, it's inevitable. That's what's going to happen. That's, that's what I mean. It's like, I just, no matter what happens. So I think that, I mean, right there, that was pretty much the reason for me why I couldn't give it a 10 because I didn't understand where they were going with it. That was the only thing I didn't understand. I loved the, <clears throat> I loved the, you know, the fact that strange is standing on top of the empire state building. And he's trying to hold, you know, the fractures of the universe together. Mm -hmm. And, can't, you know, I can't hold these together. And you start to see all the villains in the sky. And you're oh, like, man. you're like, wait a second. I could tell who that is. Right. So you're, you're starting to see him. Um, I loved, I just love how they connected them. And truthfully, I think the most underrated, in my opinion, that made it even better than I thought it would be was, eh, you know how sometimes they bring back characters and the characters are like a little bit CGI, a little bit makeup. They look very young. Right. They're, you're like, you're like, ugh, right. But Toby legitimately looked older. Oh yeah. And, uh, and I loved I love that he aged mm -hmm. and you can see yeah. he was aging the whole time. He was taken from his universe and, and doc is like, you're all grown up my boy, you know? And he's yeah. like, I am. And he, you know, and, and they have a conversation as two adults versus trying to pull off a Tobey Maguire at 49,000 right. old yes. as a kid. Spider-Man, I mean, right? Like, high school. One of the uh, funniest moments it's, it's, in the entire movie is Tobey Maguire getting his back cracked by Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Yeah, that those, just those I was dying. <clears throat> the question, though, like when they pull Norman into the MCU and they are pulling Toby into the MCU, why are they pulling from two different points in time? Well, the, no one's pulling. I, I guess uh, the the idea was that the spell just kind of fractures, fractured uh, reality for a second, and people just came in, and then Strange c collapsed it before they could really go nuts. So, I mean, I guess and there's then, no rhyme or reason to it. It just you know fits the the, the movie. <laughs> and, and also, yeah. if Ned had opened up more portals, right? He only opened up the two. Right. right? <clears throat> if Ned essentially kept trying to find Spider Man's and couldn't find them. Right. But Toby's like, Toby's like, listen, do you know where he is? Right. Do you know where he would go? Someplace to be alone, whatever. Right. If Ned had opened up another portal, does another Spider-Man right. come? Right. You know, so Dr. Strange says in the beginning of the movie that he didn't that he has no idea how many entities crossed over. So yep. what we saw was who they found and who basically was making waves in the news. You know what I mean? Green Goblin was well, flying what, around. Blowing remember, things too, up, so. Ned wasn't saying. Let me find a, a Spider Man. He was asking for Peter Parker. Parker. Right. Yeah. If he asked for Spider Man, maybe you get Miles, maybe you get Gwen. Other I mean, Spider Men like Spider Gwen or, or Miles, yeah. he's not yeah. gonna be able to find them by asking for Peter Parker. All right. I was kinda hoping we would get a Spider Gwen and then you would see like Andrew and her kinda like look at each other, but she has no idea who we are. Right. Yeah, it would have fried in Andrew's universe. You know? Yeah, it would have been amazing. I still would have absolutely yeah. loved it if the animated characters from Into the Spider Verse came through at the end to help them win the, win the day. That would have been just the best. Remember when I said I was worried about this movie because I thought yep. they were putting like five, ten pounds of shit in a five pound bag? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been ten pounds of shit. <laughs> five pound bag. <laughs> well, for Chris, would have been, Chris would have been the only guy. Going out loud, yeah, everyone would have been like, "Boo this man!" 
I actually so oh. at, at the end when when the spell explodes and you see all the terrors in reality and stuff like that. So I took I was trying to take note when I saw it the second time. You see Rhino in like a classic Rhino suit. You see yep. Craven the Hunter. You see like the big fur like kind of vest on him. You see I think it was Black Cat. I couldn't. You can't really tell because it's just like somebody in a uh, assassin you suit. Scorpion. You see Scorpion twice actually. Scorpion. You see him the first time. Strange messes up the spell, and then you see him in better, like a better silhouette the second time. And so, I, for a split second, I thought to myself that some of these villains were going to come through just for a real quick thing. Like, we weren't going to, it wasn't going to be like a long, drawn out battle, and that we were going to see some other people swinging on, on webs to kind of help fight them off for like, you know, 30 seconds or so while Strange finished the, you know, forget Peter Parker spell. Much, too much. It would have been, it would have been too much. Oh, but, you know, bringing. Tom Hardy into the end credit scene is not too much. It's not fucking too much. guy, man. It's not too much. It's I fucking not too much. hate. I hate that Venom so much. I can't even. The more, the more I think Bro, about it, the more I hate that version movie, of Venom. The movies were butt cheeks, but we're not talking about the movies right now. We're talking about why it was there. We but know why it was there so that Tom Hardy could pinch his nipples in an MCU film. That's basically the only reason why yeah. it was there. Otherwise, Crazy. it was garbage. I watched oh. Tom Hardy pinch his nipples all day in the MCU. No problem. <laughs> no problem. No, I mean, obviously, uh, Tom Hardy was brought in in the end credit scene strictly just to eventually leave a little bit of symbiote in the MCU so we can get a more traditional I, Venom I story. That whole scene. So, what a passion. go ahead, Fred. Let off because I, I know you have a lot to say before, about that. Scene. Before, before I get into that, can we talk <laughs> about how awesome um, Tom Holland, Spider Man, his ability was when he was in a room full of cure, cured, semi cured villains? And he saw with his Spidey that sense a cool change in personality from yeah. Norman Osborn. Yeah. And he couldn't figure out where he's getting the sense from. Yeah. And you, his first instinct was just like, May, get the hell out of here. Something's yeah. about to happen. I will say. Uh, I thought that was awesome. He picked up on someone's psyche changing. It was a phenomenal scene. And it was a good, a unique yeah. way of showing what, what the Spidey sense does or how it feels for like this, for Spider Man or Peter, you know, the Peter Parkers. But I will say that I never thought a scene of somebody getting punched in the face hard and laughing at it would be more intimidating than Heath Ledger doing it as Joker until yeah. Willem fucking Defoe at 60 or however years old he is was <laughs> laughing at Tom Holland with that cackle, man. Oh, such a good scene. Bro, he stole that whole movie. He was I on... Agree. on I agree. Him, him and Andrew stole most of that movie. Yes. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. They agreed. proved that yeah. they were really underutilized in their own films, for sure. Yes, 100%. Yeah, but, so um, yeah, and now the Amazing Spider-Man three is trending because everybody wants a new Andrew Garfield movie. Yeah, <sighs> listen, uh, if if they announced it, I'd I'd give it a shot, but they don't need that. I, I, I think he he's over it too, though. He doesn't want to do it. I he, love... he might exist in Morbius's world because who the fuck knows where Morbius exists? Well, you know what? We can we could jump to that that topic because uh, I feel like oh, this movie really throws. Morbius. I already was a little iffy on it, but then after the way this ended, uh, I'm I'm kind of like, what? Well, do we even need Morbius? I want I want to ask you guys a question. Still about this movie. It's about a cutscene, and one? I really I, I really actually have a question because I was very lost. <clears throat> so at the end of this movie, Tom Holland walks into you know the the diner that MJ works at. Whatever he sees, Ned he sees they get into school. Okay, cool. Blah 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 blah. And it looks as though New York is back to where it should be. Everything is going accordingly. Mm-hmm. Everyone their day. In the second cutscene, all of a sudden, you know, Strange comes out of the the Sanctium, the New York Sanctium, and he and everything is like floating in the sky. <clears throat> and I'm and I'm wondering how, right? Like, did something else? Did he do? They're not showing us that he do something else, and all of a sudden that spell didn't go right. I, I didn't get it. I think that's gonna be my guess is that that's gonna be a different dimension, like maybe like the mirror dimension or some other dimension is gonna almost like send some sort of signal to Strange or to Wong even, and kind of let him know something's not right, and then he's gonna go trying to find what that problem is. And I think that scene that you're describing is gonna be him in another dimension leaving the Sanctum Sanctorum. I think what yeah, it is. I... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, so I think what it is is this. It's. I think we're overthinking it too much. I think that the Spider-Man breaking the the multiverse thing was a red herring, and it all goes back to Wanda, Wanda and Loki show. Yeah, I agree. Show, 
and that that they end up that Kang ends up blowing up the multiverse anyway. Um, and really like the Spider Man thing really has nothing to do with the multiverse of madness thing, but it just kind of introduced the idea of the multiverse to sure. us as the video as, as the viewer. Now the whole Wanda necro you know, with the book of the damned and and um and uh, and uh, the Loki Kang stuff is going to come to fruition in Multiverse mm-hmm. of Madness. Mr. Buttersworth says it too. Uh, this is what Kang was talking about in the finale of Loki. All yeah. the branching timelines and, and realities just yeah. intersecting and causing problems. Go ahead, Fred. Sure. I just didn't. I, I wish. Go ahead, Fred. Go ahead. I was going to say, I wish that not every splinter, not every crack was closed during the final spell. Right. Like, well, we don't know that they were, though. Yeah, you know what it, I mean. They, like, they kind of imply it. They imply it. Yeah. Everything closes, you know, and er- everything's back to normal. And then out of nowhere, the multiverse explodes again for Strange. Right. I wish we would have had like instead of the Venom scene, we would have had like another cut scene of somewhere in the world where you see a split. Right. In reality. Like a small and one, like maybe like in an alleyway or something like that. And yeah, like yeah. not everything closed, and all of a sudden something's coming through and you're right. not sure what yet right. and then that kind of goes into the you know Doctor Strange, Strange trailer. Strange walks out of the sanctum and there's just one crack above that. Right. Right. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. <clears throat> right. Something. And it's, it's just kind of him going like wait so, so, something's not right cuz everything should have been de- dealt yeah. with already. But I yeah, think right. we're also going to find out that oh no, is everything's closed. Right. So what the hell I think we're going to find out at some point, though, that all these different events that are are messing with realities are all just kind of it's like a constant attack on the timelines and whatever. And that's I think I feel like in Ant-Man 3 in particular, we're going to see that, you know, all this was maybe calculated by the actual Kang the Conqueror to try and almost like weaken the reality so he could take over. I th- I honestly think that John, what you're describing about uh, Strange coming out and seeing all this weird shit happening, I think we're gonna find out that Strange Supreme, which was the the evil Doctor Strange from the What If show, is it was, it's all his manipulation to to try and get out of that pocket dimension that he was in, and uh, I, th- I think that's kind of gonna be the overall storyline. That's my guess for Doctor Strange too. By the way, we just threw this away before, but Wong is the Sorcerer Supreme now. Good for him. Wong. He fucking deserves it. <laughs> Good for him. It makes sense. It makes sense. I do like that Dr. Strange was like, yeah, he got it on technicality. This fucking guy yeah. over here. I'll take a blip for five years now. This guy's the Sorcerer Supreme. But let me ask yeah. you this question, though. Wong is this is the Sorcerer Supreme right now, and in Shang-Chi, he's throwing fights with the Abomination. How are they going to mm-hmm. explain that shit? Well, he didn't throw fights. Well, he won the fight. Abomination threw it. Abomination would have I mean, fucked him still, up. He's still broke. He's the Sorcerer Supreme. They don't make money off that. Yeah, he still makes a, a dollar and change for a, a no, tuna melt. money somewhere. But it was it was a way for him to show his powers and being able to control the Abomination, right? Like nobody right, right. can. Right. But he and, could. And he put him down. He really did put him down. But once he decided and it was over, he put him down real quick. He put him yeah. down. And he followed him and told him, you know, he's got to go back to his training. You know, so... <clears throat> Mr. Buttersworth just said uh, that we don't know what time and what point in time this movie happens, and that's what Kang was pointing out, that all these kind of crashes in the multiverse are just going to be happening over and over again. It's, it's not a bad point. I think this movie, I believe this movie takes place before Hawkeye. Because ha- Yelena makes a comment about visiting the new and improved Statue of Liberty, and we see it get destroyed in this movie. So I'm assuming yeah, they were Hawkeye's also building afterwards. the new Statue of Liberty at, the, at that point, too. Right. That's why I feel like maybe they rebuild it and then we get Hawkeye, and now the Statue of Liberty is and you know, the whole Captain America. Point of them going to see Doctor Strange is because the boss tells MJ, "Hey, can you take down those Halloween lights?" You know, right, right, right. So it starts in Halloween, ends at Christmas time, which is when I guess uh, uh, yeah, so Hawkeye takes it's place. Probably you know, like November, end of November. We're gonna need a new timeline for the MCU at some point. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So where so where do you think we already talked about Venom, but where else? And we talked, I guess, about Hobgoblin, but where what else do you think happens in the future of, of Spider-Man for the MCU? Um, Battle World. You think they're going to go that route? You think they're going to build it down to that? I mean, I hope not, because Battle World's kind of a silly idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but maybe they do it. Um, maybe they do it the same way they kind of did uh, the Planet Hulk thing. You know, where it's just kind of like not Battle World, but it's Battle World. Like you a know small what I mean? part of it. Yeah, I, like a small part of it. I think Daredevil. I think Punisher. I think Blade. Um, Morbius. I think all of these guys get introduced here at some point, and I think it sets up. <clears throat> obviously, for whoever saw Elements, mm-hmm. uh, you know it sets up. Star Fox searching for Thanos, uh, uh, in a different, you know, in a parallel, uh, universe, you know, it shows him, um, you know, telling them where, where the other celestials are, things like that. So I think that I have to try and piece together as many characters as possible, because as we know, like the MCU, the first Avengers, it was what, like, 10 films before we got the Avengers, 12 films, was, whatever it was. It was, uh, I think, five films for the first Avengers and then five. another five or six before Age of Ultron. Because you're you're not getting many – you're not getting many connections right now where you can you can see them at some point coming together to fight uh, right. Galactic or Doctor yeah, and right. I think – I think they said that we're not going to get a, a team up movie for quite some time. Right. It's going to take a, a lot of movies to come out. To well, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like this was a team up movie. I mean, yeah. essentially, this was the kind I mean, of team ups yeah, we're going to get. You know, these crossover cameo yeah. kind of events. I don't think we're going to get a full blown Avengers for a while. You know, I mean, Fantastic was, Four is a team up movie. Essentially, you know, Guardians will be a team up movie. I don't think we get the full blown Avengers until we get Young Avengers. Um, well, I think that's. The, it seems like that's the whole point, right? It seems like the where they're setting up the Young Avengers. They're actually setting up. I can't remember the name. Zuplex, you might be able to help me out with this. Uh, there's a group in the comics. It's Blade, Black Knight, Morbius. There's a few characters. Oh, the Mid- Midnight Suns. Yes, where it's like they're their own little kind of like uh, yeah. Avengers, but they deal specifically with like monsters and demons and all that kind of shit. Yeah. So it seems like they're building out even the uh, um, the Immortals. No, what's uh uh. Thunderbolt Ross, he's Thunderbolts. He, you know, oh, the, yeah, the Suicide Squad of the MCU. They're basically building that yeah, out they're too. They're either going, they're either going Thunderbolts or Dark Avengers for it. Right. Um, so they're the building finale. out multiple teams. They're bringing Fantastic yeah. Four in. They're bringing the Guardians of the Galaxy back. They're probably going to completely revamp the Guardians of the Galaxy at some point. So I feel I mean, like they're I, building up teams to give us, you know, Avengers, you know, Endgame times Infinity, and we're going to get nine hundred people on screen. <laughs> fucking going at it i think we've, we've spoken about it before that i, I thought this was how they were going to go where you're going to have your, your galactic heroes all in one kind of like storyline and then you're going to have your um your your like uh uh what's the word i'm looking for like your your ghost rider right right like, your, sp- your, like um, your, your spirit supernatural world, supernatural, supernatural here, stuff yeah. going on over here you're gonna have your soldier stuff going on with you know captain america you know with talking the winter soldier and Hawkeye and the new Black Widow and all that stuff. And then you have your Young Avengers. You're going to have your Spider-Verse, you know, and then, like, you'll have you'll have the guys that kind of cross in between them. Like, I think Spidey's going to wind up being that character that kind of crosses in between a lot of the um, a lot of the other teams. I think I think he's going to be an integral part in Young Avengers. Yeah. I think that I, I do. Um, so there's. There's a theory that I saw that it's kind of a little out there, but it makes it makes a little bit of sense. Is that the spell that Doctor Strange used said that everybody in the world would forget who Peter Parker is. Right, was. I read this too. But you got Nick Fury who's off world. You got Thor that's off world. You have all the Guardians of the Galaxy that are off world. So do they still remember who Peter Parker is? So I and think they do. And I think the reason the East, the little hint that tells us they do is that they made it a point for that DO, uh, Department of Damage Control person to tell Peter that Nick Fury was off world. They, yes. they specifically said that in the, in the beginning of the movie. So I think that's, that's kind of a hint that the well, spell doesn't affect can them. Reach, just to be devil's advocate, if they can reach multiple universes with a spell, why can't it reach? the rest of our universe well because all the all those tears in reality could have just been leading to other earths you know what i mean we don't know that they were leading to other planets from other dimensions or other realities it was strictly yes. earth across and plus we were dimensions. discussing earlier if you fred you brought up the point of like um does the other universes forget that their peter parker is peter parker 
Right. Well, in this case, with the way the spell is written, they wouldn't, right? So you're just talking about our world. It makes so. sense then um, that it just fixed the rifts in our world and that anybody off-world would still remember who Peter was. Does I'm this erase literature? Because no. you have a million newspapers saying Peter Parker is Spider-Man. You have... J. Jonah Jameson's video messages. You have more um, Mysterio's video saying Peter Parker is Spider-Man. How do you explain all of that? I think they're going to go the Westworld route. And anytime you see something that proves Peter Parker is Spider-Man, they're just going to be like, it doesn't look like anything to me. Yeah, yeah. It didn't really exists. It's just hearsay. But listen, boys, <clears throat> first and foremost, it was great coming on camera with you. I think I've... Uh, battled these chills i'm gonna crawl into bed and just get relaxation here and uh we definitely got to do this more often yeah do you have any uh final thoughts before you go yes uh if the mcu puts out movies like this more often i'll be bringing tissues (laughs) okay (laughs) noted yes it was really truly um i think we've i think rarely we can say that the movie meets the hype yeah, mm-hmm. and I think the hype was was unobtainable, and they obtained it. So mm-hmm. I think you know we kept talking about it over and over again. You know, Zuplex said it himself that he hopes they don't put ten pounds of shit into a five pound bag, right? Like you're 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 hoping they don't mess up how to introduce Spider Man. You're hoping they don't they don't mess up how to introduce villains. They hit a home run on this, and I and I'm one of I'm one of the few who's probably not really a Spider Man fan. Like Spider Man's got a real big fandom, right? He's one of those original. He's got a <clears throat> massive fan club. I was never so sold on the Spider Man character, and it's not because they kept redoing it. It just he didn't interest me so much. I became a real true fan after this movie. I was like, you know, he's super intelligent. He sacrificed everything. He's going to be the next Tony Stark. And I do believe he's the one who recruits, like you guys were kind of right. alluding to a little right. bit, the one who recruits. <clears throat> and I'm all in on on Spidey going forward. But if there's any more tear jerkers, I'm out. But Tom Holland, there always is. <laughs> I know. All right, brother. Go, go for us. Go feel better. Feel better, bud. Thanks, guys. Feel better. Later. So, um, oh, I got to fix your back cameras, to- yeah. Going back to what you were saying, Fred, you were asking if it deletes all the um, the video and newspapers. I think it does because there's a reason that Peter has to sew his own suit at the end of the movie, and it's because the Stark tech doesn't recognize him anymore. So now I have a I have a question about that though. So the 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 spell let the world forget or that they ever knew Tom or Peter Parker. But it didn't. The world didn't forget about Spider Man. Everyone still knows who Spider Man is. So why doesn't Spider Man still have access to the Stark technology? He was still an Avenger. He still had relationships. The the, the, the technology doesn't know that he's he's Spider Man. Yeah, Edith, Edith, and uh, I guess all the Stark systems know he's Spider Man. You know, Peter Parker, Spider Man. I feel like he he could have just. Like, he, you know, he could just it's walk up to some thing. of the other heroes and take his mask off and be like, oh, by the way, you know, yeah. ugh, Peter yeah. Parker, I'm Spider-Man. And like, yeah. you know, I, it's one of those things. I, and I'll, again, I, I still give it a nine out of ten. I still love this movie for the fan service and all that stuff. But it's one of those things where you re- when you really start to think about what the, like how the spell works, it starts to kind of fall apart a little bit, you know, because yeah. I was even thinking like, you know, t- uh, Peter Parker told Happy at the cemetery that he knew uh, May through Spider-Man. But so, in what capacity right. did he know? Did, did they meet Spider Man through Aunt May? You know what I mean? Because she only knew Spider Man because he was Peter Parker. Otherwise, she would have had nothing to do with him. You know. So there's there's yeah, a like, lot of questions. If, if did Happy still date May? And if so, you would have seen Peter Parker's pictures all over Aunt May's house. Like <laughs> right. So you still you would have known. You would know that Peter's alive at least. You know. Plus, right, if, like, if we're being really honest, how the hell does a kid? who was getting his GED at this point because everyone forgot who he was, uh, get an apartment like that in the middle of uh, New York. I mean, that shit's expensive. What's he doing for a living? They didn't even show it. Can we talk a... about that there was the same apartment that Toby had? 
That was that's a nice yeah, little touch. Yeah, it was. I caught that. Yeah, I yeah. caught yeah. that. That's a nice little touch. Little touch. Little touch. So I was, waiting, I was waiting for the guy to come in and be like, you got rent? Like immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Russian guy, right? So so my theory yeah. for yeah. what comes next. Well, first of all, wait, before we go to what comes next, I gotta I gotta go back to the villains a little bit. Uh <clears throat> best glow up of all time is Jimmy Fox's Electro. I mean, he went from being just like a doofus, looking like a cartoon character, not intimidating in the slightest, to really being the the most, almost arguably the toughest enemy they fought in this new movie. I mean, Green Goblin, you know, did his thing, but I mean, we had two two Spider Man that couldn't handle Electro. It wasn't until Doc Ock basically sucker punched him that uh, and they got to. I'm gonna him. be honest, Lizard was kind of lackluster for me. He was just there. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I mean, this was just kind of lackluster all the time. Yeah. Well. Right. I mean. Yeah. You're but right, see now but... that so th- that's a good point though because they had to bring Lizard back f- for what reason. Was it just to get as close to a Sinister Six as possible? Because you could have eliminated him from the movie and it would have been fine. Every other character had kind of their own little storylines. Arguably, Sandman, you probably could have gotten rid of too. But they all had their, just like a little storyline of where how they got into the universe and where they wanted to end up. But Lizard, you know, he was Lizard the whole time. You know, And, and like we said before, he survived his encounter with Spider-Man. He was cured in his movie. Like... Yeah, I mean that. that's the biggest plot hole in the whole movie. Yeah, I think it was more of like having pe- having villains there that have a connection to the other Spider. Man. It was yeah. more. Of, I would have so preferred much. if they brought in Rhino, because Paul Giamatti's Rhino was horrendous in the Amazing Spider-Man Two. This is a chance to kind of make him actually matter a little bit more. Or Dane I mean, DeHaan's Green Goblin. We one, bud. Well, think about this. What if they brought in Dane DeHaan as the goblin or made him the new goblin, yeah, whatever you I mean, call it, and they had have... Norman Osborn teaching him how to really be the goblin. At the same yeah, time, I mean, you have the older Spider-Man teaching Tom Holland how to be the, the real Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Like That would have been a nice little parallel. I think it would be tough to have two green goblins. No. Um, well, they didn't do it, so I guess we can't, you know, we can't go yeah, back in time. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, you know what? I, the lizard thing... First off, I didn't like the lizard when he was in Amazing Spider-Man 2. I hate the look of him. Right. Looks terrible. Like, he still looks terrible. Um, I didn't mind them bringing him in because Andrew really didn't have a lot of villains to pick from. Right. You know, like, Toby Toby had a bunch because he had three villains in the last last one. Um, uh, You know, you had, you had, you know, you had Doc Ock, you had the Green Goblin, you know, you had a whole bunch of, of... ways you can go with toby andrew really only had electro and the lizard you know because the first movie was basically him against a weird green goblin yeah. comedy and yeah. you know um so that's, that's really all you had from him so you you kind of had to bring in the lizard and electro right um, exactly i think it was about, more for the connection can we just talk about something that's been bothering me since toby Maguire's spider-man 2 Spider-Man what? is strong enough to hold to catch cars out of the air in 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 full motion, right? He's he was strong enough to stop that train in Spider-Man 2. Doc Ock is a human being with no special powers whatsoever. He should not be able to take a punch in the face from Spider-Man and get up from it. I don't care that he's got four arms. It did, it's, it's been bothering me f- since Spider-Man 2 still. I said it to my friend. It's ridiculous. Only only Andrew Garfield pulls his punches. No, you know, they all pull the punches. punches. That's they one. Of the, that's punches. been a long-standing see, thing in the comics. I, I would argue with you though that all right, they pull their punches, but in Spider-Man Two, Tobey Maguire throws pieces of a clock at him at full blast with a web. <laughs> like, come on now, you know what I mean? Maybe yeah, in this one he didn't punch him in the face, fast, but ugh. I mean, like, look, the end of the day is there's a suspension of disbelief. You know yeah, what I, mean? I, you have to, uh, I, I, I like to nitpick, but. One of the long-standing things about Spider-Man, even going into the comics, has always been that he pulls his punches. You, you learn that in Superior Spider-Man when, when I mean, and I hated the storyline, but it made people understand that Doc Ock takes over Peter Parker's body. His mind takes over Peter Parker's body. So you have Peter Parker, but Doc Ock's in his mind. Yeah, yeah. Doc Ock's a new Spider-Man, but in Peter Parker's body, and he goes to, like, See, you know, to, to stop some criminals and like low level street thugs, 
he punches a guy in the face and rips the guy's jaw completely off, completely off his face. And he goes, oh, my God. He goes, yeah. and he starts thinking to himself, like, he's been walking, this kid's been walking around with this much power this entire time. He could have killed me so many times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, maybe they'll you get know? that. I do think, um, um, I do think going forward, I think in the next movie we'll get Scorpion. Since, since we had the cameo in uh, Homecoming, I, I feel like they got to pay that off on that. I think we're going to get black suit Spider-Man. I think so, too. I think the symbiote basically yeah. gets to Peter. We'll get introduced to Eddie Brock. I, I, remember, I remember when Venom was in Spider-Man 3 with Tobey Maguire, and I remember saying all the way back then that they should have had one full movie where Peter has the suit, and at the end of that movie, he rejects it because of the aggression and stuff like that, which we saw Tom Holland trying to kill Green Goblin. They gave us a hint of that anger that he has in him. So I think we're going to see that in the next movie. And then I think we're going to get a full movie where Venom is going to town on Peter and just playing like get, awesome games and all that stuff. I think we get Black Cat in the next movie. I agree. I agree. Which already and, winds up being the, the next love interest for Peter. I agree. Because he can't hide MJ. Yeah. And because I think they're going to let the MJ thing kind of settle for a little while. They should. You know? You know, you, you notice uh, you notice she had the the black lotus broken flower necklace mm-hmm. at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. I do think so, well, I, I can see us getting black hat. I can see a, yeah. I can see venom or the black suit specifically being in the next movie. I think Scorpion will be the bad guy, but you know we have like like we said before, we have Morbius coming, we have Craven the Hunter coming. You know, there's still technically the Tom Hardy Venom, which is really should just be thrown in the trash at this well, point. Well, I think I think Morbius is gonna wind up in the. I think it's in the Tom Hardy Venom universe is it though see i don't know so there's no oscorp in the mcu right so we know that morbius is not in the mcu we the the spider-man mural that you see where it calls him a murderer that's not a picture of tom holland spider-man that's a different spider-man i think it's from the game actually so like it's toby i thought it was toby's it looked just like the same it might be maybe it is toby's but then at the end of the trailer you have morbius saying i am venom and then laughing about it it's just a joke I like oh. I have no idea, and then you have Vulture yeah. from Spider Man Homecoming in the, in the movie. Like, what I think and is that... also, but. sorry, also the Oscorp building in the Morbius trailer is not Toby's Oscorp uh, font. I should say it's Andrew Garfield's font. Right, right. So it's so, like, so I have where, zero idea where, where that movie takes place. I think at Venom. And that Morbius, their Spider Man is going to be Miles. See, now that would be killer, though, because it's honestly long past time that we get Miles Morales in a live I action think, movie. I think that this whole movie was to separate Sony's Spider Man properties and Marvel's Spider Man properties. And we know Tom, he's in. He's in you know, Marvel's Marvel's properties and everything like that. Now we got a little bit of symbiote in there that can grow up, grow out that symbiote storyline and all that other stuff. And going to be over here and Sony's little, you know, neck of the woods and stuff like that. And you're going to have Morbius and stuff. And I think instead of them trying to link it to Toby or Andrew, I think they just go full out brand new Spider-Man. Start a brand new. Have- and instead of having it okay. be a Peter Parker Spider Man, this way they're not competing with Marvel. The, the the best idea that they could go with is is going with Miles. That's actually why, a good why? guess because the Sony games are pushing Miles Morales also. Yeah. So clearly that's yeah. like a direction they want to go in. But you can also go the route of uh, why is hold on? So why is Michael Keaton Vulture? In Morbius. Well, we don't see my don't so know the only thing Vulture. I think of is we don't know that he's the same. He could be a variant of Vulture, and they're just they're putting him in the movie because everyone liked him in Spider Man Homecoming. So they said we want you to come back and play a Vulture character. But we don't know that he's Vulture. You don't see him in the suit. You know what I mean? Like Listen, he, you he can said have him it. Play Vulture in because Vulture he's universe. in jail, and it looked like he was uh, an inmate. Right. Seeing him, yeah. he did. He did say in an interview with uh, was it three or four weeks ago. That he was recently filming some vulture content, so he he didn't elaborate as to what it was for, but clearly you know it's not for the MCU. All, listen, I think all the stuff that we're pointing at in that trailer were was all put in there to throw us off the scent of 
what was going to happen in No Way Home. Which is not uh, against maybe, the know. Marvel uh, style. I mean, they put scenes yeah, in the trailer. I mean, there's stuff, there stuff in the trailer we got for this that didn't happen in the movie. Right. Right. You know? They, right. they, they, they screw with these trailers all the time to throw fans off of the off the scent a little bit. You know? Yeah, they famously um, put Hulk in uh, Wakanda in Avengers Infinity War. Just yeah. To piss us off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? So what, I, I think, uh, I think if, Morbius. What if Morbius is just another tool as far as the whole multiverse, you know, madness, I guess you would say just Morbius being in January. What? And I think I said this to Chris before, like what if Morbius is just, everything's kind of mashing together and that's why you're getting bits and pieces of every universe in this one movie. Well, like, so it doesn't I, make sense. I kind of have a theory uh, uh, that I've been thinking about. So, you know, we know Kang is basically being set up as the next major villain. And yeah. Kevin Feige, though, had made a comment, I think about a year ago, where he said that they're not necessarily interested right now in building out a villain for the next 10 years. So I, at the time, thought that I took that to mean that, like, every, say, three or four movies, they'll basically deal with these big guys and like kind of bring them onto the board, introduce them for a few movies, wipe them off the board. But what if Kang is actually is being set up for this like giant Thanos level threat that you know you need every property to kind of join hands? But what that means is not just MCU. So Kang, what if Kang is fucking with the Sony's Spider Verse, MCU, you know, X Men, whenever that comes out, and like you're talking 15 years from now, we'll get almost like the next Avengers, but it's gonna be like. Everyone, all the Spider Men, all the X Men, all the MCU teams in one in one major movie, or, or you know maybe probably three or that'd four major awesome. movies. I'd love it. That'd be fantastic. You know what I mean? I would absolutely yeah, love that. It'd be great. And that's I'm kind of worried about it because with the success of No Way Home, I'm worried that Marvel's going to be like, oh, let's bring back all our old actors to replay their roles in this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, I mean, if it makes sense, it makes sense, but you can't be doing that. 400 X-Men teams that no one cares about, you know, and they're going to lose character development and stuff like that. Well, it's funny you uh, bring this up because uh, as a side note, I know we're talking about No Way Home here, but uh, I think, I don't know who shared it on on the Generational Gaming Entertainment Facebook, Michael Keaton is coming back as Batman for Flashpoint. And then now the DCEU just announced that he's coming back again for Batgirl. For Batgirl, yeah. And they, they clearly that. they just saw everyone get excited that he was back from Flashpoint and are like, oh, let's throw in more fucking movies. Like, yeah. Warner Brothers I mean, can't get their shit together for the, to save their lives. It's ridiculous. I mean, Warner Brothers is, is a complete mess with all this. I mean, they're kind of doing what I thought they should do, and it's stop trying to bring us uh, an extended universe. Right. Stop trying to right. just start doing standalone good solid movies and let it come organically that way because like joker was a success right. it's amazing they didn't have to link it to anything else you know what i'm saying um these, these new batman trailers that i've been seeing like they look yeah. amazing yeah. and it doesn't have to link to to cavill or anything like that let them be their little thing and you know bring back affleck but i don't care if we get three different batman a year right you know, in three different batman movies just make sure they're good you yeah, know? as long as the story works. You know? As long as the story works, like I don't, I don't really care. Like I don't need an overall extended u- universe like Marvel because you're not going to be able to do it as well as Marvel right. can. Right, and, so, and frankly, we're all spoiled. I mean, we, we, you know, Marvel has yeah. done it, has done it very well, and looks like they're continuing to do it very well. So, like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like just back off, let let yeah. them let them take that space. I agree with you. Yeah, but you have enough content and you have enough characters in those books to create solid comic book movies out of them and not have to do a whole like, Oh, who's good. Who's the, when do they fight apocalypse? Like right. you don't need to fight apocalypse. Let them fight the Joker. Let them right. fight the Joker 10 right. times. Give me 10 different Jokers. Give me 10 different people playing Batman. I don't care. As long as the stories are good, you know? Um, but them trying to like constantly like, and we as fans also have to like just take it for what it is and be like, all right, they're not doing an extended universe. Let's just enjoy this movie right. for what it is. Like Suicide, the second Suicide Squad movie, unbelievable, was great, so good, unbelievable. Like they didn't have to like explain that that's the same Margot Robbie from Birds of Prey. It's the same art. Like no, it's just it. It was what it was. It was awesome. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's all, that's all that matters. Like you, you don't need a whole thing to it. I agree. I, I think uh, the, the my only uh, opinion on the DC movies right now is that Amber Heard should not be in Aquaman two. Otherwise, I'm I'm enjoying these standalone movies for sure. Well, yeah, exactly. So uh, let's see. Did we cover everything for No Way Home? I think we, I think we talked about everything. You guys have anything else that you want to bring up that we didn't? Uh, I was trying to think. Discuss? I thought there was one more. Th- oh, there's one more thread that I want to pull on here. What's that? Go for it. All right. So. Toby makes a, he says a line when he first shows up that he sensed that their Peter was in trouble. Well, you know what? Sorry, I, I was going to bring this up when you talked about Battle World. Uh, I, I feel like if that is meant to be an Easter egg that comes into play down the road, I think that's where Battle World's going to come in. Okay. I'm thinking Web of Fate. Well, I, so for the end, so a lot of. A lot of my thinking is how do they uh, adapt these storylines for the movies, for the live action movies, in a way that makes sense. So I I feel like they're going to combine those two storylines. You you re- we already have multiple Spider Men. I don't know that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are ever going to come back. So I think we're going to have a good amount of time where they establish new Spider people across various yeah. universe. Like you, to your point, Miles Morales and maybe with Morbius, we'll have t- Peter uh, uh, Peter Parker in the MCU. Um, and, and in each one of those, you can have multiple spider people, Gwen, Stacy, and all that stuff. But I think down the road, they'll kind of combine the two where they're all kind of like linked for those. What are they called? Totems or whatever, where it kind of gives them their powers. And then that's also going to lead to like a battle world type kind of team up of just spider people as like a yes. sequel, that's, you know what I mean? Of sorts. That's where to I'm going with this. That I think you're hinting at. The web of fate or the web of destiny, you know, it's been called both. Um, and that all of the spider people are linked, right? These mystical spider item idols or whatever, and that they're all chosen, um, to be that universe right. of Spider Man, right? I, so we got to keep an eye on the next into the spider verse or, or whatever across the spider verse yeah. thing is called because I guarantee they're gonna drop some more hints in that movie too. Yes, I mean, I, I think that we get a Madam Web in the MCU at some point. Yep, mm-hmm. 100%. I, I think, well, Sony you know, probably. Uh, I think Sony owns that character, so we don't know that it'll be the MCU. Yeah, I don't know with Madam Web where, where she lands on that whole like Sony-Marvel right. deal. I think, um, she's, I think she's Sony. Yeah, she might be. Why can't, I mean, why we, can't Sony just say, look, Marvel, you could take all the Spider characters. We'll just do the marketing and all that kind of shit. You handle everything else. Just be smart about it. The moment it's Sony, just, the moment yeah. Marvel took over the the Sony property, it's it's brought it to new heights. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they get more money by doing it this way. Yeah, you know? yeah, I guess get right. Because somehow way. people still like Venom, the most garbage superhero ever created. <laughs> God, I love Venom yeah. so much in the comics and the show. I, I love Venom. I hate Tom Hardy's Venom I with think, a passion. I think you're gonna get the version of Venom that you want, bro. I hope we do, man. It, think, it, honestly, if they do, I will. I will drop to my knees for for the Almighty Feige. Look, I want them to do. I want them to do Venom World. In, in I would love movies. that. I would love that. Venomize but... everybody. Go for the whole like no versus you know. Just give me Venom. Venom I, I, just, I just want Venom. classic. I want classic Venom. No. You, you know it's a problem when Sam Raimi's Venom was was more authentic to or more uh more closely related to the classic venom we get in the comic books than tom hardy's venom that did a billion dollars like and sam raimi hated venom didn't give a shit about the character and did him better justice i don't think we're gonna get an eddie brock venom well we don't need eddie brock i just want the classic storyline i want this this is why i was saying before if ned ends up becoming venom because you know in this new set of movies he doesn't he doesn't like peter parker and the symbiote i could be flash flash is an you know you know he doesn't going to go venom he doesn't have to be uh um i've said that before you know muscular like that but it could easily be flash because if you think about it flash has already been set up to have an issue with peter parker he hasn't liked him he's bullied him and made fun of him and all that yeah. jazz. Then he wanted to be, you know, Peter Parker's best friend because he was Spider Man, and now he doesn't remember Peter Parker anymore. So he's back to not liking Peter Parker. He's easily set up yeah. to to bond with the symbiote when, the, and then let the symbiote will let him know that Spider Man is Peter Parker, and he can be like, "Yo, fuck this kid." Yeah. I would, I would absolutely That's love that. I, I, I don't know if they, um, you know, 
they go if they go Agent Venom, the Flash Thompson Venom. I don't know if that's going to be one that the hardcore Venom guys like you want to see. But now, so yeah. my thing is, if they don't do the classic Venom that, that I'm describing, then yeah. that makes the whole Tom Hardy scene and the end credit scene and No Way Home even less, even 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 more of a shitty scene to add as an end credit scene, just so he could pinch his nipples and say Venom well, got I drunk. Think, listen, listen, pinch nipples or not, man, it, it brought the symbiote into our world, into into this right. universe. It's such a weird way to do it, though. It really is. They they. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, strange, there's one of a million ways, especially if if by the end of this movie they were planning on kind of resetting Spider Man. Then you could easily, in the next movie, have maybe him date Gwen Stacy, whose you know older brother's going to space or some shit like that. And when he comes back from space, he brings the goo. I mean, like, there's a million things you could do. I mean, yeah. there's, a, there's an even easier way of doing it than that because they already have it set up because you have Thor: Love and Thunder coming, and Gore uh-huh. the God is already in it. Right. He's got the all black Necro Sword, you know, which is the first symbiote. Right. So right there, you know, yeah. done. Done. You, you have, and if if our theory is right, where because he's off world, he remembers who Peter is. Right, so he he goes to visit Peter. He's like, "What the hell's going on? Nobody knows you're Spider Man." Yeah, even gets yeah. No, that's that's yeah, even yeah, yeah. crazier way that they do it. It just makes no sense. And now no, you know, Fred and I talked about that scene uh, extensively. Ven- Venom, <laughs> Venom I mean, is just lost in Mexico now. It's like, yeah. what are we doing? <laughs> The little droplets just in Mexico. I mean, like, there's now, there's uh, an interesting way of doing it, but like, yeah, you're right. They could have definitely. Uh, but why didn't the droplet just, go back? Like, I don't. What I don't understand is now. I, I guess that's the symbiote gave birth to a new symbiote, and that symbiote didn't have any memories, so it didn't go back when the spell was cast. Like, I don't understand no, because if you stay with their logic. They're all connected it's through a hive the hive mind, mind, which explains why he came into which, our. Which is why he was here to begin with. But, but now again, so like this is a, where this this is where it's, it just falls apart though, because in the end credit scene to Venom two, when he gets sucked into our world, he sees Peter Parker on the screen, and Venom is like, oh look, like looks at him like, oh like that kid looks delicious, like he never saw him before. But if he knew that Spider Man was Peter Parker, why are you reacting that way? It's just no sense. It literally was a way for Sony to just connect Venom to the MCU for one movie, and then they said, "Okay, yeah, give him back to us." I mean, just, you know, we, you did your job. Give him back. And now, now what? It's, it's such a stupid scene. It really is. Yeah, like, but if it, leads you, if it leads you to the traditional Venom story that you've been asking for, are you really going to be that upset about it anymore? Well, to answer that question, basically what I'm going to tell you is that now Spider-Man: No Way Home has a seven out of ten, is my rating. <laughs> and six years from now. I'm gonna look at this this video and go either oh they gave I got my I got the venom I wanted okay it's ten out of ten again or I'm gonna go no fuck that it's a two out of ten because they didn't give me the venom I wanted <laughs> that's basically what's gonna happen I'm gonna have to revisit this now mark my words I don't know. that whole scene uh, is just frustrating and I and yeah. I truthfully didn't like like, like I love that we got a Doctor Strange two trailer but you know I was expecting something different at the end at the, for the end credits I wanted to see something I'm, not, I'm okay with that if they give us if they want to start giving us. A, a, a teaser trailer for the next movie at the end of every movie. Oh, I I'm love that. Like that. I love that. Well, I, I was, feel like I, I, I feel like that was essentially saying, exp- almost like showing us that Doctor Strange Two is going to be a major turning point for the MCU. Yeah, we know gonna Kang be- is going to be in, in Ant Man Three, so I, I really yeah. feel like Doctor Strange Two is going to be like by the end of it. I no, think, I think we're going to get X Men in. I think Doctor so too. Strange. I think so. I think we're gonna get maybe not get X Men, but we'll get like the event that creates the mutants for sure, or that activates I, the mutants. I think we get the event that activates the X gene. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel like there's gonna be something that happens that they're not gonna explain in Doctor Strange two, but it's gonna be this like surge of energy. Some some Wanda's yeah. gonna have to do something that just covers the globe essentially, and that we're all gonna understand that that means. <laughs> She's gonna Westview the whole globe. She's, the whole globe. She's gonna hex it. The whole thing. Like, well, you know. I mean, part of part of the thing is is like we, you know, we've talked about this before. There's there's a couple of different ways that they can bring the X Men in because, like, we know, you know, from Eternals and stuff like that, that the X Gene's there. Yep. People have it. It has to be activated. Now you've had two snaps on Earth, right? Which gave cosmic power across, of, you know, of cosmic surge across the universe. Um, and now you have the Wanda thing, which I'll tell you right now, 
I'm I'm assuming they're leading towards Monica Rambeau having that Eternals X gene in her and Wanda's power. Oh, 100 percent. I think that was our first hint at the yeah. House of M storyline where Wanda basically tries yeah. to. Well, in the comics, I guess she tries to get rid of the mutants. But get rid I, of all. The mutants. I think mutants. Monica is essentially our first mutant. I think our first yes. official mutant yeah. in the MCU, and, and we watched her. Orange. The they're going to go with this. Um, I think Kamala Khan's going to be. I think they're going to change her from an inhuman. I agree. So speaking um, of that, I know we're going on a little bit of a Marvel tangent now, but uh, what do you feel about the update to her power set? I think because they're they're going to make her uh, an X Men. I think it's it's probably something that they're going to have to do. There's probably a reason behind it. I mean, uh, I, I feel like it, it definitely is the more MCU trying to have an answer for Green Lantern. And maybe Kevin Feige kind of being like, look, DC, watch what I can do. And he just takes a character, creates his own Green Lantern, does it better than DC can ever try yeah. to do. Yeah. I mean, it's you know. it's possible. I also um, think it's a way to separate her from from Mr. Fantastic. We don't need two people with stretchy powers. Yeah. I mean, that's true, too. That, that makes know. the most sense. Yeah. And speaking of that, though, you know, John Watts is directing Fantastic Four, the guy who did No Way Home. So, I mean, that, that's yes. a good sign yeah. for the Fantastic Four in the MCU. Yeah. However... I would argue that there's zero way to create a person with stretchy powers that's going to look good. You just you just really can't do it. I don't think they didn't bring it on the Flash, and that's the point. I think eh, they did do. It was good on the Flash for you know the Flash budget. Let's let's yeah, but, let's but not give the Marvel's Flash too budget, much credit here. <laughs> listen, with Marvel's budget, like you don't think that they're going to be able to to pull that off? I do. I don't think they can make it work. I think they can. I, I mean, listen. I'm I'm gonna love it anyway. And you know, you said before about suspending belief. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm gonna very enjoy worried. It. I'm very worried about that Fantastic Four movie. I, I really am. Why is that? I, I don't... It's got to be cast right. Well, yeah, that's yeah, a given for sure. But no. but Marvel is the they've one thing they've that... arguably done better than any other series or whatever out there is casting. They just sure. they get the right people for every single role. I mean, how many roles did they get wrong besides Edward Norton? Have you seen the most recent uh, Captain Marvel? <laughs> well, see, well, I would argue they didn't get it wrong. Yeah. Just you know, people don't like the character in general. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's the actress, man. Um, I mean, maybe, she's pretty bad. Maybe. I, I, <laughs> you know, but but the uh, the most recent rumored casting I've heard for it is worrisome. Well, who who's uh, I mean, I th- listen. Who? The same way Charlie Cox, we all knew Charlie Cox, Andrew Garfield, and Tony McGuire were going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm pretty sure it's known that Emily Blunt and John Krasinski are going to be Mr. Fantastic. No, Mr. that is Fantastic. not true. That is not the most recent. What was, what's the most recent one? I didn't read anything new. Uh, the dude from Always Sunny. Rob McElhaney? No. Oh, the other guy. Dennis? Dennis. Glenn Howerton? Oh, my God. Glenn Howerton as See, Mr. Fantastic. Now, looks-wise, that's not terrible, but no. there's no way you could separate him from Dennis on It's Always Sunny. If he's not trying um, to rape women and, and murder people. F. Rogen <laughs> as Ben Grimm. No, Who? that's not. It can't be real. Who? I'm, I'm Seth Rogen? Right now, that's that's, the, that's Rogen. the rumored guest that's happening right now. Seth Rogen, you know what it is. Oh. If, th- if that's the case, that means Seth Rogen is... That means Seth Rogen Support. saw uh, Jonah Hill lose all that weight and then saw Kamal Nanjiani get oh. all in shape and said, uh, I kind of want to do that, and called Marvel and said, what can I do? It's a cast leak that I'm going off of, but these guys have, did leak some other stuff that was pretty Oof. close. That's not a good start, if that's the case. I, yeah. I actually, no. I, I have Brian to be honest. Allison, Kristen Bell is Sue Storm. All right, that's not terrible, though. That's not bad. That's not I bad. Mean, She's good. She can listen. And she then, was good as Cheetah, and, and the only good thing about Wonder Woman eighty four was her as Cheetah. That's not Kristen Bell. Oh no, Kristen no, Bell. Gonna, oh yeah. yeah, she's fine. That's that's not a bad choice. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then Chase Stokes, who I'm not exactly sure who that is. Who the fuck is that? I'm gonna look it up right now. Chase Stokes as Chase Black Stokes Human Torch. Johnny Storm. Chase Stokes. I'm with you that if they go with John Krasinski, um, I'm not. I'm not. 100% sold on Emily Blunt. I know they're on a Banks field. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. We, I, he could well, be he could be good as Johnny Storm. Storm. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know him well as an actor, but the only the only thing I have a problem with the, from what you just mentioned is Seth Rogen as uh, Ben Grimm. 
Yeah. Otherwise, Glenn know, Howerton wanted... could be good as Mr. Fantastic, I think. is If he takes it seriously, I mean, you I have Glenn faith Howerton in Marvel. Glenn be able to pull off playing a genius, the, mo- the smartest guy in the MCU? I think so. I think so. Come on, bro. Yeah, probably. I think so. You just love Always Sunny too much. I do love It's Always Sunny. <laughs> so if he takes it, I'll watch it anyway. I know, man. I can't go with it. I, uh, Krasinski, I could go with. Krasinski for sure. Emily great. Blunt for sure. I think Chris, Kristen Bell, though, is not, not terrible Kristen for Bell, Sue I mean, Storm. Like, like, in all honesty, the Sue Storm thing is, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, does she really have that much chops? Right. You know, does she really need that much to go off of? I'm not sure. Well, just, just, just remember, at, at some point in Fantastic Four 3, it's going to be called Fantastic Four No Way Home, and then all of a sudden, uh, what's her name is going to come back at Sue Storm and just win us over <laughs> again, so... I think um, I think for me the biggest thing with Fantastic Four, the biggest question mark and biggest uh, issue is the villain. If if they don't immediately start by not necessarily making Doctor Doom the villain, but at least introducing the character in a way that we can all see what's coming, th- they're going to start off on the wrong foot. They need to start. They, he needs to be a major part of that movie for sure. Listen, man, I think the first villain's got to be Mole Man. Let's Mole go, Conor accurate here. They get Mole Man. And then okay. at the end of that movie, Doctor Doom it takes over Latveria. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, you could do it, but I'm okay, I'm okay with that. Like, let's let's have a fun Fantastic Four movie, because like the thing, the problem is, is this, right? How many times are we gonna have to see them get on that spaceship, right, and get their powers? Come back, and Doctor Doom's the, like their friend that turns out to be a bad guy again. Like, do we got to do that over and over? I would again? also, I would argue that, that we don't need, that we don't need uh, to see their origin again. I feel like yeah. we, the first movie they should already have their powers. Maybe they're keeping it a secret from everybody, but they should just move on. They, they should I just think, have it already and just, just, you know, let, let the story go ahead. I think you know what they, that when we're watching uh, one of these Disney Plus shows in the background, they talk about some space fight that went horribly wrong due to sun flares. Yeah, and then the 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 Storm family that was on on it, uh, the Storm and Reed Richards family that were on on the spaceship, uh, got caught in a bunch of cosmic flares. That's real, real, it. real quick before we uh, uh, wrap it up, I'm gonna tell you right now: the only way Fantastic Four, besides having Doctor Doom, will win me over as a fan, is if the very final episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. De- uh, <laughs> Dennis walks through some sort of portal in the back alley. And appears in the MCU with with a gray stripe in his head. It, it, it's a it's a Ned portal. Yeah, it's a Ned portal. Ned was like, oh, you know, I want to see someone with superpowers, and all of a sudden, Glenn walks out. Oh, and, no, uh, even he's... better. Frank sitting there making Dan, the portal. Danny DeVito, the Danny DeVito of, of Ned. The, the whole <laughs> we're calling it right now. The very final episode. I hope the people from It's Always Sunny hear this. Danny DeVito is constantly like, look what I found in the back alley, and no one no one gives a mm. shit except for Charlie, and it's the sling ring. And at one point, he says something, like moves his hands, and all of a sudden, the portal opens up. And, and Dan, Dennis great. is like, I wonder what's in here. He walks through, or they knock him into it even better. And then Danny DeVito closes the portal. All of a sudden, Dennis is now called Mr. Fantastic. So, all right, boys. We've been streaming for about an hour and 50 minutes. This is a good, this is a good episode, guys. This is a good stream. Thank you guys for taking the time out. We need, talk we about need no way to home. do more of we need to do more of these. I, I 100% yeah. want to do it. I was thinking about maybe doing one for The Matrix if it if it requires it, but I haven't watched The Matrix yet. Um, yeah, I'm probably um, watching that tomorrow. I, I think same I, here. I got, through about half of it. I got through about half of it today. So, I mean, we might need to do a deep dive on that one. They don't all have to be two hours. Um, but I do want to do I, – I love doing this kind of stuff. This is what I live for, just talking about nerd shit. So uh, yeah. I do want to do more of these. Even, even if it's, like, just to – go over rumors pat thank you so much uh thanks for sticking with us the whole time and uh i agree uh uh scythe if you know even if we're just uh kind of talking about some of the news and updates and all that stuff yeah uh i I definitely want to do this more i was actually thinking about maybe like a bi-weekly thing i feel like weekly might be a little too much but uh you know the more people i can get in the better and uh you know bi-weekly i I would love to stream on facebook as often as possible and Make sure you guys get your votes in for the Ultimate Marvel Movie ch- uh, Tournament because uh, we're down to the last eight people and uh, we're almost done with them, actually. Hell yeah, so, Pat. Hell yeah. Anyway, so, Pat, yes. You're, I'm telling you, even even what we talked about and what we described in this movie, it doesn't even do it justice. You're going to love everything no. about it. Everything we said, when it happens, it's even better knowing that it's coming. 
So I saw it on Monday, and I would argue, I would say, I enjoyed it more on Monday than I did on Thursday. I knew, I knew every everything was coming because the rumors have been, like I said, the yeah, we pretty much knew everything Hollywood anyway for years. So, um, and every time I still had goosebumps and chills going on my spine. Yeah. So it's definitely worth worth. Chris, seeing. Uh, I just want to point out I was right on two things, and one was kind of like obvious. What? In my opinion, it was obvious. Um, that it was going to be Andrew that saved MJ. Yeah, you called oh, it. You definitely called it. Which it was kind of, and I guess, you know, in hindsight, it, it was, was kind of obvious. obvious. Yeah. But I remember specifically, me and you were going back and forth on this. His suit was inside out. I called that. You did call it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I forgot about that, call. actually. That's it's a really a good, good call, call because I thought yeah. it was some, like, random manufactured suit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he just turned it inside out, which was a genius move. So. Mm-hmm. All right, boys. Uh, thanks for the people who jumped into the chat. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. Join all the social medias, Facebook, Twitch. Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and uh, keep an eye out for all the announcements. We're doing a lot of giveaways now, just really kind of growing, and uh, I will see you guys next time. <laughs>